It's time to make the bus cut. So I'm sort of following along and showing you the area we've got prepped for the cut all the way around the bus. And this is how we do the raise. Now, I know there are a bunch of ways of doing it, and I certainly don't want to imply that somebody else's method is wrong, but I've seen like beams put from window to window and jacks in the middle and all kinds of stuff. And we've not found it to be necessary. We've done 40 foot roof raises, not 40 feet vertically, but a roof raise on a 40 foot bus like this. Now, maybe that's because we're using a little different stuff, but let me show you what we've got. So we have four of these that we made and much like a lot of others use uh, threaded rod with nuts, we have a similar setup, but we've modified them a bit. Let me show you this one. First off, we take it all the way down to the ground. So this sits on, not the ground, but the floor of the bus. So this sits on the floor of the bus and that offers additional support. So when we weld this on here, we're not putting all the weight of the bus roof right here and it can handle it. The roof probably raise weight raise. The roof probably weighs, I don't know, 400 pounds, 500 pounds maybe. Uh, so it's not a ton of force, but we've ground off the old weld and sanded this flat and it is ready. So every time we do that, we weld it. I've got to take the paint off here, obviously on this hat channel. I'll take the paint off, I will weld that. And when we're done, we'll cut it. But that way, this weld only has to keep it from moving side to side. And the base here, add some stability and just additional support. And then we've got nuts and the upper piece. Now you'll notice this is the part that gets welded, but the pipe here is longer because the longer the pipe is, the more it can limit the movement of the, the rod inside that pipe. And it's one inch pipe. It's a heavy wall pipe. And this rod is not your hardware store rod. We special order this stuff. It's actually B7 one inch threaded rod, B like Bravo. And B7 is essentially the same as a grade five bolt. So if there was a grade eight equivalent, I probably would have bought it, but this is way, way overkill. Uh, the reason we use one inch B7 rod is because you are not going to bend this. And of course we live in a pretty, a pretty windy area. So when we're doing a roof raise, which is outside, we wanna make sure we've got a lot of stability on there. So I will bring this up to about there and weld it. There's our cut line. So we'll cut here. I will weld these into place and then we will do the rest of the cut all the way around the perimeter.
need the reading glasses. wheel, you could do it with a sawzall and a metal cutting blade. I just happen to like the plasma cutter if you got one. And it, I've got it set so it'll cut through the skin. It won't go all the way through the ribs, but then I can go on the inside and see where I need to cut around the hat channel. On the inside of the hat channel, I just have to come around like this from cut to cut. We are cut and separated. Actually, there's about a quarter of an inch gap there. And this is free. And then up front, we're starting to separate here, but there's a lot of adhesive. And what I'm using is actually this hose pick. It's used for getting in around like uh, radiator hoses that have been clamped on and they're stuck to the pipe. And I'm using this now just to clear out the, or break the seal on the outside in the gutter seal. So, or the drip, the drip channel seal, sealant, whatever that is. This is the inside of that brow over the window, the windshield. And even though I've taken out the rivets, it's definitely glued in place. So now I am just separating that glue seal with a mallet and a little thin pry bar. Up here, this is the little drip guard over the driver's window. And I've taken out the rivets because my plan is to clean up this edge so it's nice and straight and it will go all the way across and line up 
and I will lap that over the new insert piece, which will go up underneath it. And so it'll be full width. It'll just look like this is a natural factory edge. It'll be riveted. And at the bottom, it will come over this and get riveted into place. Now that 3M5200 is pretty amazing stuff. And I could even lap it on top and seal it. And I know that it's not going to leak, but it's a more professional look, I think, to you know, run your joints so that the upper piece laps over the, the lower piece. So that will come up here. Now this I bent out of the way and after I'm done, I will bend it back and I cut through here. Now you see that gap, that's just because I'm spreading it apart, but this I'll hammer back flat and the new piece will fill that and it's just gonna look really sharp, I think. Let me take you inside and show you. This is the inside over that driver's window. So it's cut here and I will put new material in that channel. So it's cut here. One of the more challenging parts was actually separating the adhesive bond between the, the, the front cap there and the brow over the windshield, especially in the corner. Up here in the front, I could get a pry bar in there and pull that away, but over here, I just needed some extra love and needed a way to kind of push that up and what I use for that are these positioning wedges. You can get these at a welding supply store. And with that, you can apply a fair amount of force. And you can see that uh, I'm actually pulling that adhesive up and breaking that joint over there. So I'm doing that in a way that I'm not pr putting any stress on the windshield down here because all that tension or force is being applied on this rib over the top and then directly down on that support. So after I get this all jacked up, because it's free, uh, after we get it jacked up, then I can weld in new support channels. We are getting separated, but I wanna show you something, a little bit of a snag. We're about an inch and a quarter maybe apart down here. These nuts should be pretty easy to turn and those are all super easy. But this one is noticeably harder to turn. And if you encounter that, do some digging uh, because something is probably stuck. And what I found was I've got a little piece of metal right in here that is still hung up. It's probably only a quarter of an inch wide and it's stretching and I think it's cracking, but that was obviously uh, resisting the movement upwards and I could feel it in my nuts, if that makes sense. So anyway, yeah, don't just keep reefing on that thing. This would eventually break, it wouldn't hurt anything, but if you're hung up somewhere, you'll know it. Those nuts should be pretty easy to turn. So I'm just gonna zip this off with my uh, long reach zip wheel, and then we'll be totally free and ready to crank this up 14 inches. I didn't adjust that jack at all. As soon as I cut that, this popped up. So obviously it was under some tension. And again, don't wanna just keep going. You don't wanna break anything or uh, stress out, rack the frame where you're gonna start busting windows. So we are free. And now it's time to clean up all the tools out of here because I'm gonna have to be moving around from jack to jack to jack and we'll get this raised. I just realized I never showed you welding these on, and you may have noticed that when I did the video of that tacking it into place, I tucked a glove in on top and bottom. The reason I didn't film the welding of these is because I cover myself and this with a welding blanket. Sorry, it was like I cover a welding, I put a welding blanket up here and make sure I weld below the welding blanket because those little BBs that splatter off the weld will stick to the glass. Uh, they'll actually embed themselves in the glass. It's pretty amazing. They'll go all the way across the bus. So I try to be really careful. Uh, either cover the windows or use a welding blanket. A uh, couple days ago, I was out installing a sign and I had my phone in my pocket down here and it fell out face up. And I'm going to show you a picture here right now and you can see, you you can, you'll see on the face of my phone, I've got a couple 
little BBs embedded in the glass. And that, of course, then cracked the, the screen on the phone. So be careful. Cover yourself. Make sure you have no chance for welding splatter to go anywhere else. Partway there, it's just a lot of wrenching. Now, I have considered you know, welding a nut on top of this and welding this nut onto the shaft so that maybe just a, a known amount, six, eight inches or down here, weld this nut in place. Then I can get on this one with a wrench and this one with my impact and just go around and zoop, zoop, zoop but I probably would be tempted to maybe move too far on each move. So I just go around, do it manually. It's a little bit satisfying and Zen-like. So this is what it's going to look like, but a bit higher. But now you can see our concept with the cut and how the, the new sheet metal will go over, I'm sorry, under that upper lip, over the bottom lip and get sealed and riveted in place. It'll look really clean. Over the door, again, it's going to look really clean. And then down the side, we'll get, the seam will get covered with the rub rail. So that's all I'm gonna show you today. Got nothing else for you. Have you ever done a roof raise? Well, the first time I did a roof raise, I had never done a roof raise. So just do it, give it a try. As long as you're safe, brace things well, account for wind and side load and stuff like that so nothing falls on you if you don't get hurt just do it